All right, good afternoon, and thank you for your patience, and appreciate all of you uh, coming here this evening, uh, this afternoon. Yeah, this, um, you know, uh, uh, being the superintendent of Dallas for as long as I have been is, I'm going to try not to get emotional because I'm a macho Mexicano and I shouldn't do that. Um, but it is special, uh, the journey that I've had the opportunity to be on. But also, let me clarify, this is not about me. This is about us. And over here, you will see um, the real group of people that have made this work. First of all, the school board. And let's do a, since SOC has been doing so great, let's do a football analogy. The board, they're the owners. The board are the owners. And the board hired me as the head coach because we are a team. And we are Team Dallas, and we've had a lot of success. But the board is tough, they're thorough, they smart, they're smart, and they care. And I can't get away with anything, and I shouldn't, because of the thoroughness of this school board. So my hat's off to the board. And then to the staff. I got a lot of great staff. But just like South Oak Cliff, they have an offensive coordinator. And that's Susana Cordova, who's my new deputy. She's my offensive coordinator. And of course, the chief of staff always has to play defense, so she's my defensive coordinator. But I've also have had a, a great team my entire tenure. Um, and today, I did notify the school board um, in writing that I have every intent. And by the way, you guys were wrong about two things. Let me correct you guys. I know you're very intrepid reporters, and you guys are very smart. I'm not retiring because my wife won't let me. I tried that one time, she said, get a job. So I'm not gonna retire. I can't, it's not in my DNA. Also, some of y'all were said I'm stepping down. I wanna correct you, I don't step down, I step up. So I'm not stepping down on anything, I'm gonna step up, but I am going to exit as superintendent. My last official day will be December 31st of 2022. And that's in the letter that I'm submitting to the board. The board is not listed for the agenda for action. They're going to formally accept that later. And so you'll see the formalities. But I do want to thank them for their leadership and support. I will be around um, for the foreseeable future, certainly through that date. But also, let me tell you, you can only have one superintendent at a time. And so whenever the board... In a moment, they'll talk to you about what their plans are for a superintendent. And whenever they make their selection, then I will step aside. I will make myself available to the new superintendent, whoever that may be, um, and, uh, after the last day for the 21-day <coughs> waiting period for that superintendent to accept um, and sign the contract. And then I will be available by Zoom or maybe at the golf course or wherever they want me to be. Um, but you only have one person running, uh, being the chief executive officer of the school system. <clears throat> I do appreciate the board for having the wisdom of putting that in my contract that I would go and try to find some, at least one person for them to choose from. But that does not narrow their choice. Now I take that plan and I hand it to the school board because they get to hire the new superintendent, not me. And so we need to be very clear about that. A couple of other comments. I'm very proud. I'm very proud of what this district has accomplished. Ten years ago, the Broad Foundation quit doing prizes for urban districts because they couldn't find a high-performing district. Five years ago, there were a couple. And now... You know, I think Dallas is in that conversation. HEB named as the best large school district in the state last year. There is no urban qualifier in that. That was what they said. That's not what we said. So it's taken a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. And I want to bring my lovely wife up here, who has been my rock. And she's followed me all over the state. And I really want to thank her and my family um, because they've been in steadfast support of me. Um, I could have finished my contract. That's just two years out. But could I do this for 10 more years? I'm 65 years old. Probably not. They need to find someone who can keep this magic going for, 20, for 10 more years or 20 more years. And we still need a lot of improvement to do. 
but I am really going to be focused on landing this airplane in the next six months. So I think the board president has some comments, and then I, we'll be back to take questions. Thank you, Dr. Hinojosa. And before I get started, I would like to ask my other colleagues on the board to come and join me up here. I speak on behalf of the entire board, and I want to first start by thanking Dr. Hinojosa for his leadership over his time here in the district. Dr. Hinojosa has been in Dallas for many years. This is not his first time even in Dallas ISD as a superintendent, as you all know. Uh, he's been here for these last six years under Hinojosa 2.0, and we want to thank him for all of the work in making Dallas ISD one of the fastest improving large school districts in the entire nation. This transformation under Dr. Hinojosa's leadership has been hallmarked by increasing student achievement, decrease in staff turnover, and deftly navigating what has felt like crisis after crisis after crisis with stability and with grace. I can personally attest from my own experience, I was a principal in Dallas ISD when Dr. Hinojosa came back in 2015, and I felt that as a principal, the stability that he brought and allowing the successes in Dallas ISD to flourish, uh, and this board thanks you, Dr. Hinojosa, deeply for your commitment to the city, to these students, and to these families in Dallas. Um, we've been blessed to have such an outstanding leader. And as Dr. Hinojosa noted, he submitted his uh, letter of resignation to the board, um, but that this board will have to take official action in the future. And even after that point, Dr. Hinojosa will be remaining on board with us throughout this process and beyond to ensure a smooth transition. Um, and while Dr. Hinojosa is leaving big shoes to fill, I know that if I can say one thing, every single member of this school board up here is committed to doing our due diligence, to finding the, the excellent and best successor that we possibly can find to continue this work in the future because our students here deserve it. I know one of the big questions that will come up is what happens next. So within this week, we will appoint a committee that will oversee this process. This superintendent search will begin starting in January, and we will have a robust process that will involve community input and involvement, as well as a search for both internal and external candidates who make excellent fits for this role. Um, and at the conclusion of this process this spring, our goal is to identify the next superintendent of Dallas ISD who will take us forward into the future um, and have that in place before the first day of the new school year. And then even throughout this process, as I mentioned, Dr. Hinojosa is committed to standing by and, and doing his part to help ensure that the stability and the magic that has been happening in Dallas ISD only continues to go forward. And so while all of us are sad to see Dr. Hinojosa leave this position, we know that this is still just the beginning for Dallas ISD. And we still have a long way to go to ensure that every single student in this city gets an excellent education. And so I know that I speak for my colleagues when we want to say again, thank you to Dr. Hinojosa, and that we're committed to going through this process and finding the absolute best person to fill this role. So with that, I want to thank my colleagues for being up here, and I do want to invite Dr. Hinojosa back, and we'll be happy to take, I believe, a couple questions. Thank you. I will entertain a few questions, although I have committed to meet with, with some of you individually after this. Um, if you want to have individual questions, but any questions that, yes, sir, Demar. Well, my sole focus for the next six months will be to the superintendent of the Dallas ISD to make sure we land this plane for this year in the pandemic. In the future, I will talk about the future when that comes, but I am not going to entertain any conversations. This is about the Dallas ISD. This is not about me. This is not about my future. This is about the leadership transition that needs to be effective and efficient to get to the next level. Other questions? Yes. That's just part of my vernacular. When people, I have teased my staff that say, tell me we can't get something done. I said, there you go, Debbie Downer. Uh, negative Nelly, wet blanket. I said, stepping down is a term like, I'm not, I'm not dying. I'm, I'm an enthusiastic person. And so I, I, I correct people's vernacular. So I'm not stepping down. I'm stepping up. I don't know to what, but I am going to step up. I, I'm, like I said, my wife won't let me go home, so I've got to find something to do in the future. Andre? Andre. Why now? Why now? Because I think I alluded to that in my 
initial comments is, you know, right now, this district's in the best shape it's ever been, and we can attract the best. Let me tell you the sad story. Now with my announcement, 14 of the 20 largest districts have lost their superintendent during the pandemic. In fact, and then five others, their, their superintendent had less than two years of experience. And then only the Orlando superintendent and until today me were the only two that had more than three years of experience sitting in the chair. And why now is what I alluded to. Yeah, I could finish my contract, but I think right now when your success breeds success and when you're on top, you're able to attract people. And so I think, could I do this for 10 more years? Probably not. You think about Miami. Miami was a very struggling school district in 2008, and they had the same superintendent from 2008 to 2021, my friend Alberto Carvalho, and now he has gone to L.A. It takes stability. So I owe it to the stakeholders to have a smooth, efficient process that is non-controversial. It took Houston three years to find a superintendent. We don't need three years. We need to have an organized, methodical way in which the board makes, they got three jobs, approve the budget, set policy, and hire and fire the superintendent. So they need to do that in an organized, efficient manner. Bill? Bill? You want to step up forward and actually interesting. <laughs> He said, Fort Worth might be interested if you want to step up. No, I'm not leaving Dallas. My grandkids are now going to Dallas schools, and I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not going to ever leave Dallas. But thanks, Bill. You initially said, I'm here as long as the board wants me. So I'm assuming the board still wants you. Three, boy, you listen to everything I say, Bill. <laughs> I used to say three things. As long as I'm healthy, and I'm still healthy, um, and, you know, I've lost 50 pounds, so it's not my health, and I'm not sick. Number two, as long as I think I'm doing a good job, and you know, I wanted people to be on my shoulder. You know, Jose, you're forgetting where you are. You don't know what you're talking about. And I've got my, my advisors. A couple of them have said that, but I don't really believe them. So I think I'm still okay. And then as long, and the third one is as long as the board wanted me. Then I would joke that I've ordered a pine box um, for my conference room. I've had to cancel the order um, because yeah, I don't want to be selfish, and I don't want to just hang on to this this outstanding job for me, it's bigger than me. It's, it's something that someone needs to have the opportunity to continue it much longer. And I think it's just the right time. Yes. Sí, gracias por la pregunta. Hay mucho que hacer. Nos, nuestros niños se han uh, atrasado un poco, pero también tenemos muchos planes para ayudarlos. Y yo quiero que los padres ten, eh, nos den su confianza porque vamos a tener éxito hoy, mañana y por siempre. Porque tenemos un plan para también uh, traer líderes de las escuelas que nos puedan ayudar en el futuro. Y no, yo quiero que nadie se asuste. Esto, eh, no es, este no es un día triste. Es, es, es un día de celebración porque hemos tenido mucho éxito. Superintendente, ¿qué espera que el próximo candidato, la persona que lo reemplace, tenga? ¿Qué cualidades necesita para pues, llenar sus zapatos después que estuvo en la escuela de Dallas como estudiante maestro y ahora superintendente? That's a great question. I'm going to answer it in both, both languages. Lo que se necesita en esta ciudad es alguien who tiene, que tiene ánimo, que tiene cariño, que tiene el deseo de mejorar las vidas de los estudiantes, pero al mismo tiempo um, tener um, logros, tener uh, metas que son grandes, que podemos lograr juntos, y, te, y alguien que conoce la comunidad. Her great question that she asked me is, what, what, do, you, what do I think is needed to be successful in this job? I, we have a lot of challenges, but we have a lot of success. We never apologize for our demographics. And what I think, it needs someone who has high expectations, someone who can motivate and push and support people, but never waver that our job is to make sure that our students are successful. And a lot of people, I think the difference between 1.0 and 2.0 is that during 1.0, 
people didn't believe we could be successful. And we didn't get a lot of help. We had Dallas Achis and Don Williams and Arcelia Costa and people like that. But we had, and Rena was on that commission. And people didn't believe we could be successful because of the issues that we had. But now people not only believe it, now we're proving it. But we got to keep that momentum going forward in the future. And I think it takes someone who's going to have the grit and stamina to be here for a while. And we're going to do the last one here. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that the uh, battle between the state and local school districts is contributing to the number of superintendents that we're seeing leaving across the area and across the state? And does that apply in your case? Great question. The question, if you didn't hear it, was are these political battles at the state contributing to the departure of superintendents and my departure? In my case, absolutely not. Uh, I love my job. I still love my job every day, and I'm going to love it until the next superintendent is hired. So in my case, it's not, the tr not that way. But these cultural wars are wearing people out. I have friends that tell me, this job, they didn't sign up for this. Those of us that have fought urban battles, we know. We've been having this forever. But now that they're creeping into the suburbs and other areas, it is wearing people down. And in Dallas County, we have a lot of vacancies for superintendent right now. So I think it has an impact. And I'm, I'm not going to apologize for being outspoken. It just doesn't apply in my case. In my case, it's just we're in the best shape we've ever been, and we need to have someone who can carry that torch much further. Thank you very much. I think Robin will help me visit with... Um, uh, with people, I think uh, I think we're going to let our board president, our outstanding board president, Ben Mackey, kind of close us out. So once again, thank you all for coming. Thank you to Dr. Hinojosa. Um, I do want to just close this out. This is just the beginning of this process, and Dallas has still got a lot of great steps to take, and we look forward to that.